hello everyone uh, I hope you can hear me through this uh, thing that I unfortunately have to be wearing and it's also a, a little bit windy uh, so I hope the sound quality uh, won't be too bad um, this is a kind of a experimental video I would like to make uh, just talk about things that I've been thinking about um, thinking about just whatever uh, recently the uh, topic I've been thinking about was uh, how software freedom relates to uh, uh, the concept of so-called suckless or minimal or Unix philosophy software whatever you want to call it uh, let's just call it suckless for the sake of uh, simplicity Uh, yes, uh, that's something I would like to elaborate on. Um, we are probably uh, familiar with the concept of uh, suckless software. We know what the what the opposite is. Uh, it's the so-called bloat or overly complex, overly complicated, monolithic software. Um, we are just calling it again bloat. Uh, probably everyone also knows uh, what free software is again someone may call it open source I prefer the term free software because uh, really it's about that freedom um, we know it's a, it's a concept based on four basic freedoms that Richard Stallman uh, has defined it's a freedom to run the software to study it to modify and distribute and he also came with the GPL uh, and the license the free license that uh, should legally and that is the important word uh, guarantee those freedoms uh, and uh, the issue nowadays is uh, that people have kind of uh, learned to stop at that. that mm, they learn that a so uh, free license means free software. It's a black and white thing. Software is either free or it's unfree. Um, based on license, yes, but uh, most people think no further. And uh, I think that is an issue. Uh, of course, uh, we know that that uh, a lot of companies have uh, adopted free software. They were, in my opinion, forced to adopt it because people, a lot of people, require it mm, for security reasons, for example. It, it of course has uh, advantages for co of companies, uh, companies of course, uh, unpaid developers. It's a more efficient uh, model of development uh, for many reasons uh, it became successful and companies have adopted it, but uh, there's no doubt uh, that control is in there interest that proprietary software is uh, proprietary software is what they would want uh, and uh, control is what they want and mm, the question of freedom really is uh, about who controls the software uh, the idea of freedom is that the users should have the freedom to uh, customize their tools to to own their tools and uh, since uh, since free software licenses became a kind of a standard standard uh, the market the companies uh, are searching for other than legal ways to control uh, the software and uh, one of these ways is uh, that uh, 
blocked in the house, complex, uh, obscure, the obscurity, because uh, companies, of course, can afford to pay hundreds of developers uh, that that maintain this, uh, developers that understand this whole complexity, but. Uh, the the freedom uh, the four freedoms in practice not really legally uh, the freedom on paper is there there is that license but uh, the de facto uh, de facto freedom freedom in practice is, uh, is limited by this the freedom to for example study or modify it's kind of limited uh, yes you have you're given the right to but in practice you really can't because you uh, would have to put an enormous enormous uh, amount of energy money time into into forking the new software and maintaining it and it's a lot of a uh, lot of work and you can't really uh, you can't really fork Linux uh, or KDE or GNOME or in the web browser make it your own uh, uh, you really can because it's a very huge project as yes, uh, people do it for example the ungoogled chromium uh, is an example of, of people taking the, the open source uh, Google browser and uh, trying to take out the malicious functionality and uh, we know it's, it's happened kind of yes uh, it does happen it's it is possible but it requires uh, a lot of people a lot of effort it's non-trivial and it's becoming more and more difficult this, uh, the situation will be only getting worse uh, and uh, this is one way the companies or no, it don't have to be really companies but uh, groups of people uh, become the de facto owners of free software uh, you know uh, we know that Google uh, is the de facto owner of uh, Android even though it's based on the uh, copyleft licensed um, Linux kernel which should Therefore, remain free, but uh, while their um, their proprietary Google Play App Store, they've been able to take hold of it to own uh, Android, <laughs> and uh, that's uh, another another way they're trying to uh, seize the control. So uh, now. We're talking talking about the complexity, though. Uh, so uh, let's think about, uh, for example, the desktop environment uh, or the browser situation. You know, there is a constant debate what what the best browser is, and a lot of people say that there there really isn't one. Uh, you know. Uh, because there are a few browsers and in the development communities there are uh, situations such as uh, such as uh, debates of uh, political opinions and kicking people out of development and um, um, Uh, uh, if we consider, for example, the desktop environment, that's a similar, uh, similar situation, and uh, a lot of people have started using um, the window managers. Uh, as I have, uh, I have started using the DWM, uh, suckless uh, window manager, and. Uh, and uh, 
it's a great comparison uh, when you when you consider the KDE for example uh, you can't fork it you know uh, you can't just accept the next version what they've done with it just accept it you can customize it to some degree but uh, with DWM you really have to fork it you know every every user has to create their own fork and they can customize it completely uh, you can understand it completely even if you don't know C uh, programming you can probably figure out many things and uh, really the number of people who can understand it is enormous uh, as opposed to uh, the number of people who understand how mm, KDE or GNOME works or how Linux kernel works or mm, some other complex software such as web, a web browser uh, so DWM uh, in my opinion really is uh, that free software uh, in which um, in which uh, really you can't imagine uh, any of that situation such as uh, such as the political uh, issues with codes of conduct etc you can't uh, imagine uh, someone owning DWM and someone being kicked out for their opinions uh, out of the devel development because uh, everyone has their version no one Owns it, uh, and uh, also um, it doesn't require. It doesn't take a corporation to maintain the, that DWM, even if it goes unmaintained for uh, four years. It's going to work probably. You know, uh, there are little dependencies. Uh, less code uh, it will work a long time in the future even if uh, even if uh, people stop you will, uh, maintaining it or you can keep maintaining your own fork uh, really there is that uh, true freedom uh, as opposed to just uh, that freedom on paper the reason why I'm using free software really isn't that I personally can go and modify it for example I'm unable to make uh, substantial changes to my OS kernel because I'm not an expert of course and wind again um, I'm not an expert in operating systems but I know um, the free software guarantees uh, that um, if there is a bug or there is a demand there is a uh, high chance of someone someone uh, being able to fix that bug, satisfy that demand, uh, add that feature, uh, create the fork for me, you know, that's why uh, I'm using free software, so uh, really, uh, really it's about maximizing the chance that someone can do something in case something goes wrong and that's, uh, that's why we use free licenses you know uh, but once uh, a certain group takes de facto control of uh, a piece of software for example a uh, operating system a, a web browser a desktop environment they become the de facto owners of it 
all right so uh, there is uh, another uh, advantage of cyclist software uh, when we compare for example when we stay at the DWM versus the KDE uh, uh, the advantages become especially prominent when uh, you consider that uh, the suckless version of the software really is able to uh, do the same work uh, and mm, a lot of times more efficiently, mm, more quickly, uh, more comfortably. You know, I can do anything with my DWM you can do with your desktop environment. Uh, I do a lot of things in command line, that's true. And a lot of people, a lot of people argue that uh, it's unintuitive, that a desktop environment simply is intuitive, is comfortable, and most people, most normal users want that, but uh, I disagree with that, uh, or that is the situation nowadays, but generally uh, the intuitive way, the more intuitive way, usually, or a lot of times, is uh, to uh, use the text interface to come to the computer and type print and press enter as opposed to really uh, grabbing something and moving it and manipulating a cursor over some button that will scroll out in menu and in which you have to click on another button, button with print or something like that that really is the more that's the inferior way of doing things, I think, and uh, that would be also what people would tell you, uh, probably, when, at the times when computers uh, were just uh, starting to exist. So, mm, the situation we have now really is that people are taught to see graphical user interfaces intuitive and to think that that is the, the intuitive way uh, because uh, they grew up in a world where there are computers that work only with with uh, this interface and that's what the uh, what the corporations are pushing of course uh, because that's what they want that's the situation they want they want that monopoly they want that complexity uh, that only they can manage, that only they can afford to manage, even if it's inefficient, etc. They want that. And when you realize this, uh, you see that really the suckless software is uh, kind of the right way, uh, usually the intuitive, the efficient uh, way. It has all the advantages. It has uh, the, disadvan the disadvantages just vanish, and uh, that's how I started to see that Sakura software. You know, uh, but uh, of course uh, the situation nowadays is uh, unfortunate. But I think it's uh, important to realize this. That's good for them, of course, but it's not good for for you as a person, for the people, for the users of the software. Uh, all the users should, or most users, or as many users as possible, should be able to uh, to modify their tools. And that is what what that simplicity is about. Really, you know, it mm, it really tries to respect. Uh, you uh, it tries to oh this is bad it uh, really tries to respect you uh, it uh, it lasts for a long time you know it uh, doesn't have to be maintained so intensively it doesn't have uh, so many dependencies, so uh, that software can't uh, die as easily. It can be better ported to anything you need, 
it uh, it really tries to give you that freedom you know it exposes everything uh, demands as little as possible from you the dependency the computational resources uh, the knowledge of programming you know that that is really freedom uh, genuine freedom not just uh, freedom on paper the license and um, perhaps the last thing uh, that I like to think about is a little more philosophical it's a little encompassing all technology kind of or it's, uh, it's the idea of it's the idea that uh, the technology should really serve the people not the other way around you know when uh, the blocked software the complex software uh, really really makes people do the unnecessary work unnecessary work that is unpleasant you know, at least to most people the digging for bugs and you know when adding those unnecessary features That is uh, that. That, in my eyes, is really the technology enslaving uh, the humans. You know, uh, people have more jobs. That's true, but it's an unnecessary job. Uh, the effort they put into it could be spent on things that really need to be done. So uh, that's kind of the idea of the philosophical idea of how technology should really be made as much as possible to say serve the humans and not vice versa uh, I guess uh, these are the things I'd like to talk about today I think that's kind of it um, Yes, and I hope uh, I hope it will make someone uh, think about this and maybe realize something. Mm. You know, maybe it will make someone try this Apple software or just think about these ideas. Maybe it will make you reconsider how you write your software. Uh, yes, yeah, so I. I'd probably like to discuss it if you have uh, any questions, suggestions or arguments, anything. Just go on and write me an email or something. Um, Alright, thanks. Uh, bye.